Hi, welcome back to Renee Ruth Music. Welcome back. Hope everyone's doing well. Yeah. Hey, how are you? Perfect. How are you? I'm so excited. Man, our last week. I know. We were like, we were both like, oh, we're both like, it wasn't even an NFT. I episode. It wasn't. It was, I can't even remember how. I don't even remember what the episode was now. I don't even remember and how somehow, it got included, but somehow. It landed on NFTs and you and I went down some rabbit hole of we don't know. <laughs> we did and, and I, I boldly made the statement that we should talk about it this week. Which was so, pretty bold because as bold. we mentioned in the last one, we actually even listened to a, a Udemy class on this. I remember listening to that and I was like, I don't know what's happening. I just, I'm we were so driving confused. and I'm like listening and I'm like, it was a processing, but I guess that was a year ago, so it must be that was clearer information that you found. And we had so many questions. We just and then the and then this happened, and so right. we were just like, okay, one at a time. Yeah. So NFTs, um, not non fungible tokens. Yes. Are generally created using the same type of programming used for cryptocurrency. The difference is that NFTs cannot be exchanged or traded equivalently like cryptocurrency can, like Bitcoin. Not like a dollar to dollar. So, yeah, like one Bitcoin can always be traded for another Bitcoin. Yeah. NFTs are different because they're completely unique. So, much like if you went to an art um, studio and you wanted to buy the original, you could buy the original for a crazy amount, depending on what the value is, or you can buy a copy, which would be much which is less. What they sell at Hobby Lobby. Yeah. So they're, they're, not, they're not they're not equivalent. Got it, got it. Yes. Okay. So that, that makes sense. sense. So it's like it's really is artist driven, like well, creative driven. Yeah. So. Um, what does fungible mean? Um, Did you look that word up? I didn't look that word up. Fungible. Doesn't that sound like a fun word? Fungible. But like so, basically, a Bitcoin is fungible, and an NFT is not. So okay, think, okay. Does that make sense? So okay. Maybe fungible has got to do with exchanging. Right. Okay. So, but. Everyone watching that knows better than us, just feel free to comment. Right? So, an NFT, so an NFT creator makes money every time they sell their NFTs, honestly. And you don't have to actually be an artist. Like, that's a misconception. There are software, software tools that will basically help you create and mint whatever NFT you want you to make. But obviously, for sake of music, we are going to talk about it. That's the part where it got really confusing because I yeah. could understand. Like, do you remember the turtle guy? Yeah. And he was creating NFTs about the turtles in Florida in an effort to raise money to help save them. Yeah. So that they could make it from land to shore. And so the he would make these little turtle NFTs and mm -hmm. sell them. And so I was like, okay, I can understand how art and an NFT works. Right. It still is a thing. Yeah. Like it still is a tangible, get a photo or like, you know, where music, I'm like, I make a song. Mm -hmm. Unless I were to create an, like an album cover, but instead it would be a song cover. And then that becomes a token. I really could not process how music and NFT. Right, so, ba so basically an, an NFT allows the buyer to own an original copy of a digital file, which is what's completely unique to that file. Hold well, on, an original copy of a digital file. So is the original then considered the wave versus an MP3? Because if it's a digital file, copies and copies and copies are made, what's the original? So there's, there, however it's done, I'm not, this is where my brain doesn't work properly. However it's done, there is something that is so unique about that file that, that you wouldn't know if it was a copy. Like they would be, they, they know that it's a counterfeit. Like however they, however it's set up, you cannot have another copy of that file. Like the NFT is completely unique, one of a kind asset. So then in that case, does the, artist who created that song, I'm guessing, right. who would have, in essence, owned that song has now passed song ownership, kind of like we talked about when, um, um, shoot, he sold all of his music, his uh, catalog, Genesis, Genesis sold his yeah. whole catalog, is it that idea? 
said, no, this is where it gets fun. Oh, okay. This is, this is going to answer you your question. You see my brain trying so gonna, hard to wrap myself around Right? So this, is, so this will answer your question. Once I saw this, I was like, oh, that makes so much more sense. Because again, the question you were having was, is that one and done? Like all of a sudden you sell this one of a kind piece, whether it be a song or a clip or whatever, and then like, that's it? And you're done with it? Well, you sh technically, you would think you would be done with it. Nope. Not the case. So this is what's cool about the NFT. You always make money on the NFT because as the creator, anytime, so you sell the NFT. Okay. So someone else owns that NFT now. If that person sells the NFT again, you get a cut of that sale. Who organizes this cut? Right, I have no idea. So the, uh, the creator always gets 10% of every time it gets sold. Now. Okay, let's go back to our turtle people. Okay. So he made the little turtle thing. Right. And he sold the each little NFTs. So every time, when he sold it, he made 10% of that sale or he made full sale? He made full sale because he okay. sold it. He like sold it. it was, that, 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 that was the first time that it was then sold. Never sold. Okay. Yep. So then when the next person buys it, they make full sale of that? No. No, because again, the original at that point, the creator is going to get ten percent. So that person that sells it is not because that person is not the original creator. That person just owns an NFT. They're selling it to someone else for ninety. Right. Well, for less because the platform takes a cut. Okay, it's just cut. Yeah. So. So but basically, it's kind of like it's kind of like how a broker is just going to take a cut of the commission. So it's kind of that So then it's always thing. 90, 90, yeah. 90, 90, 90. Right. But the creator time. gets to keep 10 all the time. Yeah. So every time it gets resold, the creator gets 10% of whatever. But this is what's cool about it, though, because in the music world, as you become more famous, the value of that NFT is then going to increase. So right. where you may have sold it for $500, but then down the line, you get wicked famous, as you will. And then all of a sudden, the NFT can be sold for a million dollars. You get 10% of that. But, <laughs> but, whoever sells it when I'm famous makes the 900,000. Right? I know, that's true. <laughs> so, like, you're, you're still getting a cut, but you're still taking. So, okay. So, it's kind of like getting like a residual. Mm -hmm. So, it's basically what, so it's kind of like a ref share for your. Okay, okay. So, but forever. Yeah. Forever. That's the difference. So, yeah. that, like, if you were to make the song, it's like royalties. Yeah. yeah. So it's like you're basically, you'll always be getting royalties off that NFT. In an NFT world. Yeah. So, but I'm curious. So, because royalties, then what happens to that song in the real world? You might have to go research this. Do you well, follow? I, so I, like I follow. that turtle NFT doesn't exist in the real world. Right, that turtle doesn't. The music does. The music well. So, so the cool part about the music side is that they can share that music as much as they want. All it's doing is making it more popular. Right, right, but okay, right, right. But now I'm coming back to like all the conversations that we've had in the real world about right. music and and sync and like all these different things. Like what happens if like do I now if I've sold it, I no longer own it, so I can't perform it like that's 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 the piece that I'm not sure, We're about. Not sure about. Yeah, that's the piece that I couldn't quite find it answer to but I think the whole idea of it is well one idea of it is that you get to decide what you want an NFT to be in terms of it you don't have you don't have to go the route of Kings of yeah. Leon who like made a whole album yeah it could be that you I mean like literally like the NBA even got in on this and they're making like video reels of like LeBron James like ducking like having like these you know cool you know, side shots and all these things, and, they, and they're literally selling those. As, as oh, get it. So it can also, video. yeah. So it can be very creative in terms of what you're doing. Oh. So it's not like you're necessarily like, oh, I just made this great song, and I'm gonna sell it as an NFT, and then I lose it. Like it could be that you do stuff in the back, perform it. You perform like behind the scenes and sell the and sell that. Like Fred and I NFT. drumming together, right. and that's like the NFT. Yeah. But like the so first like, time we, the first time I ever decided to drum. Right. Which was last night. So it just gives you, it gives you more creative options of what you can do yeah. with it. So literally like one of the reels that LeBron James sold, sold for $208,000 in NFT. 
So he actually has, he's actually done this quite a bit. So he's so fully in. He's fully in. He's immersed. Yeah. Immersed. So, but I mean, again, that's not taking away from anything he's doing. No, no, no. So, so this is just like another strip. That's like another strip we've been coming oh, yeah. to do. Yeah. I think so, again, the same thing for anybody in music. So, and it's also the cool thing that they were saying is it's also just a way for your fans to help support your career. In another space. So, like, if yeah. you have fans, because I'm, I'm, because then I'm also like, who's in this world? Right. Who are these people? Yeah. Because you and I are like, Look, look, if the NFT is like an ocean, Chad and I right now are like, dip, dip. Right. <laughs> we're yeah. like, what is this? Well, yeah, yeah, we're like. So the NFT is kind of, almost like a stock. It's like buying a stock. It's like another, well, and then that's the whole Web3 discussion. Yeah. Like it's this whole other thing. Because if, obviously if, if it loses its value, then it crashed kind of like a stock would. So it's like, kind of like you're playing the market. And it, well, so, so it would crash in the sense that nobody would be buying it. Right, yeah. So it just like, kind of sits there. Kind of just sits. It may not be gaining any value, but if it, if you, the person that bought it would be the one that's going to lose out. So if they bought it for a whole bunch and then it doesn't sell. So anybody anything. that's in there is kind of playing another mm -hmm. version of the stock market. Exactly. Hedging so, nuts, you know. Yeah. So basically they're like investing in artists and their success. Be like, hey, let me buy this NFT because I know it's going to help you get to the next Thing. Yeah. So it's kind of a way for them, instead of doing like, you know, crowd sourcing or donations, it's a way for them to give back to you guys, but in, in a way that could potentially benefit them as well in the long run. Oh. So instead of like donating, then they're buying NFT so that, you know, it will help fund what you're doing, but then as your success happens, right. it's going to it's gonna give back to them as well. If you haven't noticed, cool. like I'm fully unaware of this podcast. I'm like, I'm like, what? I'm like, you're watching me process this for the very first time. Well, this information anyway. We did yeah. not talk about this before. We did not. No, we didn't. So, the cool part is we have talked about the Kings of Leon quite a bit with the fact that they did it. So, what they did, which was really kind of cool, is they set it up to where they offered incentives, which I think is also how they can afford to have it cost so much. So with theirs, the band offered incentives like front row seating for their live shows for life. For life? For life. They never tour again. <laughs> right? they, never, they had to tour in order for this to work. Uh, and then like a special album package, exclusive audio, visual art. So I mean, they kind of like included a lot in that collection. Which was cool. No, so. and that was with their actual album. They didn't piece out the songs. Mm -hmm. It was an album. Okay. Yeah. So, and it generated more than two million in sales. <gasps> well, how? How many of them did they sell? Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, oh, they, like they could be more selling than more than one. Oh, oh. Yeah. So, so that people are buying copies. Right. So, uh, but, I, but they're all getting front row seats. They're all getting, yeah, 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 yeah. And that's going to be a um, big front row. <laughs> yeah, right? I mean, copies, but I think still what they would be doing is each each one would, would there would be something different about it to make it unique. Oh, maybe like the one is the so, front row seat, and the one is the right, art, so, and the one is the, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So it's like, you, they sold 500 NFTs of that one album. Yeah. Each one had to have something different about it so they could differentiate which, which it was. This is Which would still make it, So we yeah. feel like this is more interesting than it was a year ago. Yeah, a year no, ago, absolutely. we were like, like it's making a lot more sense. Drowning. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, okay, this is actually kind of cool. But yeah, so I mean, it just, it allows artists to share the royalty, royalty rights with their fans, choosing a percentage of their choice and encouraging them to share and remix the music as they have it, so that way it's getting popularity. So, oh, I love that. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I was like, okay, that's kind of cool. So, yeah. but, so that's, that's, that's how that works, which is what we didn't understand. No, like, so like we could take, so for example, Invincible, which is what I was playing drums on last night. Mm. The Disney catalog picked it up. Right. The Disney Nickelodeon did it a catalog pitch that. And they pitch constantly to that space. So when, I, I still want Disney. I still think it's Disney. Say what you want about Disney. I still think right. it's going to be Disney. So when Disney picks this up and it gets on to whatever it is, movie, sh show, whatever. And, you know, I end up with a lot of streams from it. Then I could create that little NFT from mm -hmm. SNG of us drumming. Yes, oh absolutely. And then that would be like instead of selling the song, I'm I'm selling a moment of the song in a, in a moment in time. Yeah. That that person would then own a piece of that song's history. Am I? 
Yeah. Of this no, time? you are. Yeah. No, okay. Absolutely. And then that, and yeah. then like you kind of just build what that is from there, whether it's right. video pieces or. Yeah. So I mean, you can literally have whatever you want be on that digital final, and then that is just going to you know as your success grows, the value of that will increase. So it's kind of like the Mona Lisa wasn't you know wasn't worth a whole lot at the beginning, but. No, it's like, and she's so small. Have you seen her? I know, she's super small. Well, I went to see it in person so, and at the Louvre, and it was just, I was so shocked at how tiny she was. Right? I know. And so, I don't know why I would think she's so big. Uh, but now it's like worth like crazy amounts. Oh, I mean, like, it's in a museum, probably privately owned, but publicly displayed. Yeah. Just so, like, yeah, wow. But yeah, so I mean, NFTs, anything can be on the digital file. So you kind of just you know, can customize it as much, and they can be made for like one to five hundred dollars. So like they're not like crazy expensive to make. Uh, but then Wait, when you sold. say to make, like in the platform, correct? It will, t- and we're talking one dollar or one ether because those are two different. No, one dollar, one dollar to five hundred dollars. US dollar. Yeah. So like you can make it, you can make an NFT for five hundred bucks, and then turn around and sell it for thousands. So why would the NFT, what's the variation that if I made my NFT for a dollar, oh, you mean like in terms of sale, start the sale price at a dollar? No, like in, in literally just because of however however involved it is to make that NFT. Yeah. So if, it, if, it, if you did it for Wicked Cheap and you could literally make it for, I mean, they're just giving it a price for each. Okay. Like, so, but it costs money because I know I was speaking to that one. Yeah, artist. it costs so, money to make it. Well, no, no, no. It co- to mint. Well, that's right. So yeah. I was talking to her, and, and she had all this art, and, it, and she's a producer. And I was like, "It looks like NFT art, it's like that classic oh, right. series that. art." Yeah. I'm like, "Why don't you have this up on? Um, I, why don't you have it in? Well, there's a word. It's called something. Like open C. Open C. Open C. Why don't you have this on open C? Mint these things and sell them. People will eat that up. And she said, because it costs a lot of money. Yeah. To mint each one, if, like. Like, so like it could have been like on like the higher end. For, so, for ten minutes. Because mm-hmm. I heard one ether is like like twelve hundred bucks. That's so insane. Yeah. I could be wrong. I feel like that's like I was like whoa because like yeah because there's like a conversion. It's like another yeah. world. I mean it's so like you crazy. currency. You have to go change your currency. Well, you know? the one that I the article that I read was January twenty twenty three. So maybe it's changed. Oh, that'd be so great. So maybe so like, expensive. yeah. And maybe they're trying to. to allow more people to participate right because they're saying that it is becoming like quite a big thing yeah yeah yeah. like it's not just for the it's been around for a while been around since 2015 yeah we're 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 really really behind behind. yeah Yeah, we're really behind eight years ago right a whole (laughs) pandemic ago (laughs) what i don't know i don't know it was was a lot i mean again we could go so far you know so much more in depth but like we just i wanted to kind of hit just on the music side and and like I'm actually kind of excited because my brain now is like thinking of ways right. that it, it could be fun and interesting to yeah. do that. It made a lot more sense after I read it. I'm glad you took the time to do that. I know. I was like, let's find out how this actually works. I know, because I watched it this morning and I understand <laughs> NFT. I was like, what? <laughs> He's like, yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, tell me, tell me. Yeah, it makes so much more sense. I was like, okay, cool. We could actually do a lot with this. <laughs> okay, so, yeah. No, yeah. I already think the little drum one might end up. Yeah, so that'd be good. The little drummer girl. Okay. You want a fun fact? Oh, yeah. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Okay. Oh, I'm already exhausted. This From is, the fun fact? Yeah. Oh. You didn't even say it yet. It's so exhausting. So Elvis Presley, we've ta- we talked about it. So much. Last. Well, no, because he really had quite the life. And, and also because that movie had come out last year. That's true. It was just supposed to be like the most accurate portrayal of his life. It's so it was, exciting. yeah. So, so back to him. So Elvis Presley played 636 consecutive shows in Las Vegas. Over an eight year period from 1969 to 1976, played two shows per evening every day of the week, and every show was sold out. Oh my god, I need a nap. Oh. Is that not. I was, two shows an evening? Yeah. Oh. Is that not exhausting? Well, and I'll tell you why, because I just finished telling someone this morning about the symphony and how we had a four hour rehearsal and then came back and did the show and that I was wiped and that was once. <laughs> right. Like I cannot imagine. Like it's probably what, an hour and a half show? Mm-hmm. You would imagine so, yeah. It may be something though like working out where you like it becomes like you see strength in that 
muscle so well that it wasn't that challenging, or yeah. it could lend to why he was collapsing in yeah. the in the movie that they just oh, released. Because that that so that's like much. too much of a toll on the on the. Because then what do you do? You literally eating, sleeping, performing, eating, sleeping, like yeah, every day. Why not a day off? I seem so mental to me. Well, Vegas does not stop. No, Vegas does not. No, that's true. Vegas does not stop. If you're doing a show in Vegas, like, you have to be expected. You're just on all the time. Even though, when I was there and I saw, like, the Magic Men, I mean, mm -hmm. they didn't perform every night. No. You're too much for those dudes to run around dancing. Right? I mean, it's just exhausting. I just don't even Oh, my gosh. I have I such know. a new appreciation for Elvis. Right? So much. And he did it, like, full throttle. Yeah. I've never seen Elvis... Like not he was gyrating not, not and everything. Like no. It's not like he just sat there, like, saying his own. No. No, he loved that. Good, Good on him. Good job, Elvis. Good on him. Love that. Ah, oh, wow. thank you for yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. Cheers Thanks, to you guys. All. See you next week.